there's a moment in everyone's race where they feel for a second, I'm not gonna be able to do this. I don't think I can finish this. I don't know how I'm doing this right now. And to get past that and jump over that barrier, it's the greatest feeling in the world. People love to push themselves and it's one of those sports anyone can push themselves in. It's something that, I don't know, it just feels like euphoric when you cross that line and you realize what you've just done. I got into running a long time ago. I was almost just born into it, honestly. As long as I can remember, I was always at the track meets and the road races that my parents would run at. Katie was number four, so that makes a relay, you know, in a track family, right? Four for a relay. From the box, I think she was super fast in the sprints when you're little. That's what the first thing you kind of, you know, pick out is your speed. I think she was beating her older siblings in a lot of little foot races, you know, as a little one. <laughs> and so then when she got into the distances, I think that's when she was excited, okay, can I run the distance like the older ones could. Growing up being the youngest of four and like the running family, I always felt a little behind, like they always had an edge on me. And as I get older, I start realizing that, oh, I can keep up with them now. Oh, I, I can train with them now. I can go out for runs with them. There's a stereotype about parents, you know, pushing their college athletes too hard. And luckily for me, because both of my parents were college athletes and had competed at a very high level, they knew when to push me and when to lay off. Parent pressure is a thing. It's sometimes good. Um, most of the time it can be harmful. Um, and it's hard for the parent. It really is. You want your kid to win every race, you know? You want them to beat the world, and you want them to do their best. It was really us realizing, okay, we want our kid to win everything, but we really have to be guarded and really let her know that, no, this is your journey. Don't put any extra pressure on yourself. It's funny, my parents are very different from one another in how they support my running career. My mom helps me dial it back. Now my dad, on the other hand, he holds me accountable. He's there biking with me on all my runs. He makes sure that I'm doing all those little things and he supports me in the ways of more like mechanical, making sure all those things are working so I could be at my best. The process of becoming a college athlete was a little different for me considering my parents both ran in college. I uh, kind of got my hand held through that process. I kind of knew what schools I wanted and I remember over the summer my dad and I picked out some schools to go visit. I took all the official visits I could. We knew the right questions to ask and what I was looking for. College and, and where she was gonna go, that was the last hurdle, basically. There were some tears on college visits. She was very anxious. She knew it was a big decision, but we told her you can be successful at a lot of schools and we knew we wanted a strong middle distance program. And obviously Michigan State hit that bill. Well, my sister ran at U of M, so you know, we're house divided and she really motivates me. Just seeing how running has impacted her and how she's made a career out of it, it just shows that like it's more important than people think. We were talking about my visits and I had visited U of M, I had visited MSU and we were kind of comparing notes and I remember explaining to her how I felt about MSU. And she goes, Katie, I think you need to go to MSU. I think that's where you belong. And really interesting, you'd think she was trying to push me to go to the school she had went to, but just hearing her tell me that and hearing that she supported that decision was all I needed to make the choice. I just tried to be supportive in any way I could and let her make the decision. And I just wanted to make sure she knew I wasn't going to pressure her to go to U of M just because I went there. It was really Shannon's opinion that mattered because she had gone to a different program and for some reason I just felt like if I could follow in her footsteps I would be just as good as her and so when she told me MSU seemed like where I belonged that's what it took. My brother was on the team for one so part of family was there but also the team atmosphere just seeing the men and women's team how they got along how the women supported one another how the only competitiveness there was was to be good as a whole. I just felt so comfortable it felt natural and it felt right. My teammates motivate me my parents my siblings just like everyone in my life who knows I care about running they motivate me to be better and do better. They want the best for me, especially my parents who were also runners. They have 
the greatest advice, but also I think the, the people that inspire me the most are my two older sisters who ran. Katie's been awesome to watch her grow up. She honestly inspires me. She's a very open person, very good with people, and also the way she interacts with her teammates and coach is really impressive to me. And honestly, I look up to her in a lot of ways. She's competent and she's continuing to develop in a great way. My sister, being a professional runner, it has made the dream feel much closer. I think a lot of people think, oh, it's really hard to be a professional runner, and it is by all means, but seeing her do it and accomplish that goal was truly inspiring. It made me realize that that is something that can be done. It's one of my favorite things about being a runner. It's a very individual sport, so while she has these things she did, I don't feel pressured to reach those same benchmarks because for me, just to get a personal record, just to improve every year has been enough. And I think my parents early on, with knowing how talented my older sister was, they made it really important to make me feel special and to celebrate every little thing I was doing. And I mean, just running at a Big Ten school like MSU, I feel like I, I did it, I made it, you know, I, I got to do that same thing that she got to do and the only pressure that was put on myself was from me pretty much wanting to be exactly like her but I realized that I just had to be myself and no matter what I was going to be proud of that. My perspective is how about I go invest in people invest in Michigan State, and that's what the $32 million, it is an investment, it's just an investment in Michigan State and not an investment I'm looking for financial gains from, an investment I'm looking for personal gains for so many people that I know and some people that I don't even know, and that's more fulfilling than any type of money you could have. I truly cannot thank you enough for your kindness and generosity. I'm extremely humbled by your support and giving back to a place that means so much to all of us. Your gift will make a profound impact on our program and is a statement that Michigan State is relentless about excellence both on and off the field in our pursuit of championship. Hey, prepare, right? Does that make, we talk about very first prepare for what, the first game, right? Nothing out here but green grass and opportunity. When I was in Chicago, we went off to camp and we all had bikes to, to get back and forth from the practice field to the residence halls and so, uh, since we're under construction here and our players have to travel a bit to get to practice, I thought it'd be a good idea if we could have some bikes for the guys. It's an easy way to get around. You can be going before practice and after practice, you know, keep my legs turning so I can be with Linus on the field. Because we practice early in the morning, so like you get the wind blowing and you get to like talk to yourself before you get going. And your legs get to turn it, so like once you ride, once you ride there, you're ready to run. Meyer, longtime supporter of Michigan State, they donated 30 bikes. I think they got it done in a matter of days, which I love. The great thing is that at the end of camp, the bikes will be donated to the Boys and Girls Club of Lansing, and we partnered with them, you know, for many years, and so it's just a. Uh, it's a win-win, and I'm happy to see it happen. Who doesn't want a bike? What young kid doesn't want a bike? Then you get a bike that was from a Michigan State football player. I mean, that's pretty special. It's just a way to give back to the community, give back to the kids. I'm looking forward to the day when we actually give them the bikes and they actually see the looks on their faces. It's going to be like Christmas. I'm not low enough for you. I don't want you, any of you guys to get injured and have an excuse to with practice tomorrow. So I'm doing all the heavy lifting for you guys. Go green! All right, thank you. Great job. So, how many of y'all want to go to college? All right. All right, good. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't. Regardless of whatever your circumstance is, 
you know, uh, no matter like where you live, how much money you have or don't have, it doesn't matter. If that's what you want to do, you'll find a way to do it. And there's going to be people that are going to want to help you get that done. Our players, they work really hard every single day. They study schoolwork every day. They're good people. They're, they're friendly. Um, you know, they're trustworthy. They're good teammates. They're very unselfish. Um, and they're just, just really good to be around. And so those are the type of people that I'm looking for to be on my team. If you want to be successful in life, which I know all of you do, even the, even the young ones right here, I know you want to do something, right? You guys want to make money, have good job, all that? Yeah. Okay, first thing you have to do is you have to be well in school. Okay? You have to be a really good person, be nice to people, you know, be unselfish, do what you're supposed to do, you know, every single day, and pay attention to the people who are trying to help you. Okay? Everyone here is trying to help you. Maybe one day, you can come to Michigan State. Go Green! so much. Love you. Love you to death. To all the pioneers of women's soccer at Michigan State, Thank you for coming back to campus in March and sharing your story with us. When we got here, there wasn't women's soccer at all. So in the fall of 78, we went to the IM meeting to get a team signed up, and they said, you do know this is for soccer? And we're like, yes. It's men's I am. We're like, yes, but we want to play. We played for the fun of it. I mean, we love soccer, and we like to play. When it became aware that there was a group of gals that wanted to play together, 53 people ended up playing, and it was two full squads. And so when I showed up, there was a lot of players but at a lot of different levels. Things started to weed themselves out and the core group really came down to the players that really wanted to be a part of it for the long haul. The spirit, the commitment, but then of course if you see them do things that they didn't know how to do before and they get so excited, that was a great sense of satisfaction. But it was also a big honor that they asked me to do this. I realized very quickly that this is a extraordinarily talented group of girls. We weightlifted in the winter at seven o'clock in the morning because that's the only time we could get into a weight room. They all showed up. This was not just a come if you want to come, despite the fact we were a club. This was you're all in or you're not in it all. Thank you for all your hard work and dedication through all the struggles that you endured to elevate women's soccer at Michigan State. My upperclassmen had already been imploring the athletic department to provide them with what is the process to elevate from club to varsity and what is it that we need to accomplish in order to get that. So the first thing they said was, well, will there be feeder schools? Will there be students coming through? And so we did a huge research project and got students from all over the country who sent their letters in of showing interest. And maybe it had two roles in that. One was obviously to back up the girls in their attempts, and there were a lot of frustrations at times. But then they were, you know, go back, go back, don't get turned down. And, and my other role, I think, was the more I can make you winners, the harder it's going to be for them to say no. Because you cannot deny a team that has one of the best records. And we played a lot of varsity teams. When you play a sport, perseverance is just a part of that chemistry. And every time we were given more obstacles and more criteria to meet, we were undeterred. They said, now you need to host a Big Ten tournament and win it. And we got Big Ten teams to come here. It was October of 1984. It snowed. Michael Tout, our coach, 
shoveled the field, the lines, and he got a red ball, and we won it. We won one to nothing. But then they said, well, we still don't recommend it because they're not revenue generating. And so we decided, well, we've done everything the Athletic Council has asked us to do. Now what we're going to do is try at a different venue. That would be the Board of Trustees for the entire university. So we knew that there was a five minute public comment period for students to make their case. One of the things we did is we petitioned our fellow Michigan State University student population and got signatures for people that supported the idea that MSU should have a women's varsity soccer program. So we had thousands of signatures. And Julie Staheski and I came in our power suits we had the team line up in uniform on the back side of the Board of Trustees table. We spoke to Cecil Mackey, who was president at the time, and the whole board. Annie and I rehearsed our five minutes. We had it down to the second. We had very specific points that we needed to make in a very short period of time. It was quiet. You could have heard a pin drop when we were done. And they were ready to move on to the next agenda item, but a gentleman to President Mackey's left said, I just want to comment that that's the most professional student comment period we've ever had. It wasn't until later that spring semester that the announcement was made that the university had finally decided that yes, it was in their best interest to promote women's soccer club to women's varsity soccer with all the full support behind it. It was a group effort. We all believed in the same thing. We were talented, we were convicted, and we were passionate. To get Michigan State University to embrace the future of soccer in the way they did, I think that was really forward thinking. And I am so grateful, again, for that opportunity. It takes a while for people to kind of jump on board and recognize it, and I'm thrilled that they did. Yeah. Um, it was just after Nancy and I graduated. Yeah. So. This group worked really hard as, as club soccer players to help this become a varsity sport. It's not just initial efforts, but continued efforts to continue to have conversations about the ongoing fight for Title IX and equality in all walks of life. So what does it mean to me? It means the absolute world to me. I've been emotional all day. as we celebrate our successes. We thank you for creating the opportunities we now enjoy. A program record crowd sees Michigan State beat Michigan. Thank you for making Michigan State a better place. Let's go, let's go. You've been in tough moments. You're on the road at Arkansas. You're on the road at Northwestern. That's not to mention the road wins at Illinois and at Maryland. You've gone on the road and done this before. This is familiar territory, right? This is Spartan soccer we're going out to play. You have to rely on each other. You have to trust in each other and you have to be connected to each other. I know you believe full well you can go out and beat anybody you play. You know your staff believes you can go out and beat anybody you can play. But we also know the only way we do that is we do it together. Tonight, connection, belief, tough wins. Play Spartan soccer. The biggest soccer game in the league tonight. It's the Michigan State Spartans and the Ohio State Buckeyes. The Michigan State Spartans need just one victory, and they will be Big Ten champions for the first time since 1994. Relentless Spartans attack. One big dribble. Sears rips a shot off the bar. Ohio State that close to taking a 1-0 lead. Ohio State makes a defensive mistake. And the Spartans take a 1-0 lead. Lauren DeBow in the 44th. Two minutes and 40 seconds away from moving to 8-0-1 through its first nine games. 
Takes a shot, and it's just over the top of the bar. For the first time in program history, the Michigan State Spartans are Big Ten champions. Incredible feeling, um, you know, much deserved. Our girls worked really hard for this. Super exciting, and I'm so proud of each and every one of us. My first Big Ten title. <laughs> this program started with Jeff two years ago, and now, you know, we're Big Ten champions. It's, it's crazy. If you trust the process, you dedicate the time, it can turn out well. So. We're ecstatic.